So in this uh, way, how your spiritual path helps you to improve your professional and everyday life? Um, it helps me in the sense that it keeps me lighter and whatever challenges comes on the way, it uh, those challenges become a stepping stone for further progress. That's just like, you know, mother would say that all the difficulties lie within you. So whatever difficulty you see outside, uh, it's the same thing that you have to turn or transmute within yourself. So if I take life in that attitude, then nothing can stop us really. You know, if anyone takes life in that attitude, that whatever difficulty I face outside, it is something which will help me grow inside of myself. And then nothing can really stop us. Uh, what Shorovindo talks about the Aryan spirit or the warrior spirit, the heroic heart in Buddhism, you know, that uh, otherwise life is simple, uncomplicated. You're following your heart. Mm -hmm. And if challenges come on the path, then they become a raw material on the path. So then there's no stopping for such a yeah, nice. person. So I had found uh, Mother and Shurabindu, or they had, I don't know, they had showered their grace upon me. Uh, after I had uh, completed the short leg of therapy also in the hospital, so my cancer phase, I would say, was really kind of over when I stumbled upon my words of Mother and Shurabindu, mm -hmm. when I found them. But I would say that uh, whenever I went through words of Mother on healing, integral healing, it felt that as if it's my story. You know, it's like mother is talking about my story, what I went through. And uh, it really, really resonated very deeply. And mother and Shurabindo, I think they give us the highest possible approach and also very practical uh, to go through any illness. That to strike it at the root cause, you know, not just mm -hmm. keep treating the surface symptoms but to strike it at the root and when we strike it at the root then we progress and progress brings us joy and joy is healing you know so <laughs> i can say that uh, like this we grow ahead you know that whatever we encounter whether it's a disease a mental emotional situation in ourselves uh, we strike at the root cause we are curious like an observer explorer to look at it and when we are able to resolve it in ourselves, we are able to progress through that in ourselves, then it brings us joy and it's healing, that ananda or the joy is healing in itself. Uh, I was reading today one of the literal books from, I think, Shiaru Window or The Mother, I don't remember, and I speak about inner peace. And she was telling, or he, that uh, to repeat the mantra, these three words, peace, 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 helps you to digest your food when you are going to eat, helps you to relate better with mm. things, yes? So I was uh, trying to experiment with this today and other day, and it was it was interesting. I found something different in my in my body. I didn't understand what happened, but so do you have also verified this in your everyday life? So I think if I just uh, manually chant peace, 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 I don't know if that's going to work, but. Mm -hmm. If I really feel what peace is, just like mother says that before sleeping, you make the body absolutely still, absolutely still, just like a towel on a bed, for example, wow. it doesn't move. That's what it's her words that she says that make your body like a towel on the bed and just very relaxed. And she did not use a stone on the bed. She used a towel on the bed. <laughs> 
So I think <laughs> I think that also has a bit of significance because a stone mm. is rigid. Yes. It's hard. Towel is relaxed and soft. Mm-hmm. And when I make my body absolutely still, relaxed, no movement, she says, has to be there in the body, mental, emotional space. No movement at all. And this is how you go to sleep, she says. Reducing all the movements, bringing the mind to the body. Uh, it actually, uh, one, one has to experiment. I have been really, really benefited with this stillness and peace. But I would say that just mentally chat, kind of chanting peace, but not knowing the true significance or visualization of peace in the body. I don't know how far that would help. Okay. Yeah, so one has to tune in with the feeling of peacefulness. Or st- yeah. One has to really, really want it. Then it can help. Yeah. To understand what is this word, peace, and to to live, to live it, no? is what you are telling Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's something that we probably don't understand in this everyday world because it's all is fast and all is <laughs> complicated and all is cell phones and so uh, it's a uh, uh, we have to find the time to breathe. Yes, something that you teach me actually in one of your courses. Breathing is very important. Yes, you, you was telling us to breathe. No. Mm. Uh, so you know it's very uh, it's a very common teaching. It is a teaching from the time of the Buddha's time to look at our breath uh, and when we come back to our breath when we become conscious of the breath we are breathing all the time you know, we are never not breathing but when we become conscious of our breathing mm-hmm. we become mindful of our breathing then the mind comes back home to the body and when we are home we are restful you know when imagine that you are traveling around and then you finally come back home so now you say oh now I can rest I am back home we make a cup of coffee and then we rest in the home Mm -hmm. so just like that for the mind home is the body and when the mind is consciously with the body sensations or the breath breath is one of the sensations which connects us to the body then the mind is rested and it's home and whatever decisions, whatever steps that we have to take in life, we take in this mindfulness. They are always more towards our higher possibility. They would not, they cannot be uh, actions which will not benefit me and others. So that's the benefit of bringing the mind home to the breath, bringing it to the present moment, because we are always breathing in the present moment. We are not breathing in the past or the future. We are in the present moment breathing. So, yeah, that really helps us to anchor ourselves. Okay. Uh, about this mindfulness, uh, I have a question because usually it's like uh, you go to a place of resting that you love it, like a beach, or you go to, to imagine to be walking in a forest full of beautiful trees or uh, feeling the water in your feet. So, mm. What that works, I mean, because it's for me, it's like to create create imagination. I think uh, if the same place that I create the imagination of uh, does not make me feel rested, then that imagination has no value. Why we create this scenery of beautiful place or a beach? Because it makes us feel rested. So the idea is to rest. Okay. Now imagine that maybe you have a very bad memory associated with the beach, which could be, right? Uh-huh. And if I ask you to create a you know, visualization of a beach, you can't feel rested. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so the, same, 
so the same uh, visualization may be not a very restful visualization for you but uh, the idea is to rest the mind i can rest you listening to music i can mm. rest using a creative visualization of music and maybe you know water and streams running all around or i can just rest with the breath which is very okay. simple and available to me so the idea is to rest because most of the times the mind is very chattery and lost in too much of thoughts and the outer stuff and that's not a very restful place yes i i found my mind uh then always resting in imagination <laughs> i don't like it i mean uh is very i think it's very comfortable for me to go into this beach or something because i don't like the reality so yeah. i mean what is better for uh, what i should do which exercise i is supposed to i think uh, at the back side of it you are saying that when you are thinking about the real stuff so called real stuff that is reality that's what you are sharing right yeah like I, when i am going so when i imagine that yeah okay. like i yeah, am cooking i am cooking something and i am thinking about the beach <laughs> i am uh, uh, yeah. doing um, my homework yes or writing a book and somehow i am writing write the book but also my mind is doing something else over there yes so i have this bad habit i say i call it by have bad habit you know because it's not right <laughs> i think that's why uh, all of us and it's not only with you not only with you okay. we're not alone we are all billions of human beings in the same boat so uh, that's why the need of taming the monkey mind monkey and that's mind. why I, i'm attracted towards buddhism also because it really helps us gives us practical tools and tips where we can actually as mother says in gather the consciousness because the threads of thoughts are just scattered all around we are not at one place the body may be at one place but the mind is all over in the past in the future a little bit in the present moment mm -hmm. so that's why uh, in gathering of the consciousness or what we were talking about the mindfulness of the breath you know and parallelly as i am mindful of the breath i can look that yes thoughts are going on but parallelly i am also developing another consciousness which is staying anchored with the breath exactly so slowly 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 what happens that the other scattered threads that i have all over they lose the grip over me and i am more and more focused with the breath in the present moment with the work that i am doing like if i am cooking i am you know enjoying the smells and the colors and whatever the spices that i am cooking and it's not a, it's not a problem to think the problem is that our thinking is very obsessive and addictive like mm -hmm. we don't have any control over the machine that is thinking inside mm -hmm. that's that becomes the problem okay thinking is not the problem thought is not the problem but when we can't stop it you know when it's just going on in the background and we have no control over the thoughts that is the problem that we have to resolve yeah or sometimes when something triggers you like for example uh when you were were child and some i mean you didn't like uh to go in the kitchen because the you always were punished you know or your mother never was in the kitchen was someone else and so for you the kitchen is not a nice place so when you grow up and you go in the kitchen and you cook it's like it's not a nice place so for the reason the mind trying to to escape because it's traumatized that yeah. something is it's, yeah. it's a trauma there yes 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 definitely i think we carry so much of traumas inside us that we don't even are aren't even aware of 
so yeah. uh, is this can really happen and then when i recognize that i am having resistance towards the kitchen or the beach or you know whatever that comes up in the consciousness mm-hmm. if i am willing slowly i can work to resolve it also and let go of that resistance but so, uh, only willingness is required if i am not willing nothing can change how did you recognize this resistance i mean what is resistance resistance is this that i i, I am telling you or how in you for example how did you recognize that you have resistance towards something yeah yeah i think just like you shared that i observe a resistance when i am in the kitchen so when i observe a resistance in the kitchen i first of all this there can be many many ways of looking at it a few ways can be logical and analytical that what is really making me so resistant in the kitchen so taking this example uh, you know did something happen in my own consciousness you know mm. did i have a bad experience uh, and if i had a bad experience in the past am i sure it will repeat in the future also so one can logically analyze also self talk one can do then on the other hand we can also do something like this when i'm in the kitchen and these thoughts are crowding my consciousness about the kitchen not being a good place to notice that those thoughts as surface chatter and old patterns of the ego and not give them much importance if i really want to be in the kitchen okay so staying with the breath in the kitchen and noticing those overwhelming thoughts that are coming and ignoring them basically just like you know imagine that there is a spider in the room we don't <laughs> give uh, that much of importance nice. to that disp- to the spider we say okay i see you you can be uh-huh. here ah uh, yes this is nice it's a big room you can be here mm-hmm. so just like many repetitive thoughts which come again and again mm-hmm. we can actually look at them we can say okay i see you you are here but i don't have to follow you okay i have followed you enough i don't i want to now do something new with my life mm-hmm. so in that sense again there can be many many possibilities depending on the individual okay so uh, this is a couple of ways in which one can resolve try to resolve but again there has to be a willingness to resolve if i really enjoy my suffering in the kitchen then no one can resolve <laughs> yeah <happen>. exactly <laughs> enjoying the suffering this is something that uh, we have uh, a lot yes the attachment to the suffering yeah. Yeah. Yeah.